Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I edit my YouTube thumbnails and this is what some of my thumbnails on my channel look like. I like to use bright colors and big bold letters. And this is the thumbnail that I'm going to be showing you guys how I edit. So first things first is after I take my photos, I send them to my phone from my camera and I go through and pick the one that I think will make the best thumbnail. Usually it's something that showcases the product or that I have a unique or interesting um, facial expression. So I'm going to be choosing this first photo for this video about Dr. Bronner's and so I favored it so that I can and keep track of the folder and next I'm going to be doing a little bit of face tune just to smooth out some things on my face. So whenever I facetune, it's for my thumbnails and all I do is just smooth out any um, blemishes or imperfections on my face and add some detail to the image. I never distort or make anything completely different. So I like to smooth it out and then I go into the detail tool and just like to add detail to my hair to make it look a bit curlier and also I'll add some detail to that Dr. Bronner's bottle just to make it pop more. So now I'm just going to save that image to my camera. And for this thumbnail, I also want to grab a photo that I took of these bottles just to add something extra. So I'm going to pick out that photo, go into Facetune and just add some more detail to make those bottles pop a bit more. So after I have both images ready, I go into my phone and just airdrop them. I have a MacBook, so it's super easy to transfer photos, but if you don't have an iPhone or a MacBook, you could always just email it or find another way to send it to your computer. So from AirDrop, the photos go straight to my MacBook into downloads and I can easily just put them onto my desktop and get straight to editing. So next I'll be using Photoshop and I do pay for this. I pay about 10 or $11 a month to have Photoshop, which isn't too bad. And the measurements you need is going to be a 16 by nine for that YouTube thumbnail dimension. And you can just go to your desktop, click and drag the photo into Photoshop and it will appear. So first I'm going to be working with the photo of the bottles just to remove the background. It's super easy so let me show you guys how to do that. So you're going to go into this tool and make sure it is on the quick selection tool. And basically you just hold down your mouse and hover over all of the parts that you want to keep and um, make sure that those dotted lines cover the entire outside. You don't have anything in the middle because that will kind of mess up removing the background. So you can also zoom in just to make sure that you get everything nice and good and the edges don't have to be perfect because we can fix that a bit later. So here you guys can see that I messed up and went all the way outside of the bottle. To fix that, all you do is hold down the Alt or the Option key if you're on a MacBook and just go over and it will delete those sections. So there's no worries if you mess up and get it out of the lines because you can always just go back and delete that and make it perfect or as close to perfect as possible. So after I'm done, I click the select and mask tool and I feather the edges out and smooth them just to kind of fix any imperfections. And then I scroll down to the output section, click new layer and okay. 
and boom the background is gone so i'll delete the background layer and that original layer um and as you can see i have no background which is exactly what i wanted okay so next i'm going to move in the main image of my thumbnail and just size that to fit perfectly into the 16 by 9 frame So I'm going to do the same thing that I just did for the bottle but this time to make an outline. So I start by duplicating the layer um, in order to do that and then I'm going to use that same tool over here, the quick selection tool, to outline myself and then this time I'll show you guys how to do a outline around yourself or whatever object you want. So after I have my outline, I do the exact same thing with the new layer, click OK, and then I go to blending options with a right click, and you're going to go to stroke. And so this is what creates that outline around everything that you just made using that quick selection tool. You can also change the thickness of this and change the color. So if you go back to stroke and click color, this is where you can change that outline color. I typically like to do white or yellow just to make it pop, but you can always change the color. As you guys can see, the outline isn't perfect. My hair is curly, so it's kind of hard to get that really close precision. But for this one, I'm going to be doing a white outline. Okay, so if you guys look at the edges, it kind of outlines more than what I wanted to, so I'm going to go into the eraser tool and just erase all of those edges. And sometimes I do like to make a border, but I actually don't do that in Photoshop, so I'll show you guys later how I do that outline. Okay, so now I got all of those edges cleaned up and I'm just going to slide up the image of the bottles to the top so that it will show whatever's on top of your layers is what's going to show and I'm just going to play around with that and size it and place it where I want it to go. Also, something to keep in mind when making thumbnails is that stuff like the timestamp and lots of other um, hover cards on YouTube will be on the right side, so I try to put most of my graphics and text on the left side. So now that I'm done, I'm just going to export this to my desktop, and then there's one more final step before I'm finished. Okay, so I have my image on my desktop. This is what it looks like. And there's one more final step that I'm going to be doing on a website that I use for everything. So this website is canva.com. It is free, but I have the paid version just to get some extra features. I use this for thumbnails, um, graphics, my intro, outro, even for a resume. This website is awesome. It's super easy graphic design. So here I have a file that I always use for thumbnails. So this is my last thumbnail from my previous video. I'm just going to delete that and then import my photo and get started on making my text. So for me personally, I like to use the same type of font and color scheme and so I use Canva because I can pre-save all of my different settings and use these same fonts in all of my thumbnails and YouTube videos. So I'm going to fit that to the correct size. It's the same 16 by 9 dimension 
and now I'm going to work on my text. So for a thumbnail, you want your text to be readable, nothing too fancy or hard to read, as big as possible, and you want it to stand out. So also you don't want it to be too long. I would say maybe one to four words long. So for this one, I'm just going to go with this kind of drop shadow look that I've been really loving lately. And I'm just going to write Dr. Bronner's and fit that into the screen as best as I can while also being very aesthetically pleasing. So now I'm going to do the final step, which is add a border around the outside. This is another way that just really makes your thumbnails pop, which is the goal because people will want to click on your videos if your thumbnail looks interesting. So I just go in and search up a rectangle and fit that to the border and then add whatever color I feel like doing for this week's video. And boom, thumbnail is finished. Now I'm going to save it to my desktop. Um, this typically doesn't take too long. At first it did take a while for the Photoshop part, but the more you practice, the quicker this will be. I love editing and making thumbnails. It's my second favorite part behind actually recording the video. So let me just show you guys the progress from the first picture to the second to the final product. So let's go to, here's the first picture of just me holding the bottle. Then this is what I did from Photoshop. And finally, here is the final product of the thumbnail that I uploaded to my last video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure you comment them down below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.